When you think about the heart of an engine, two critical parts quietly orchestrate how everything works together, the camshaft and the crankshaft. These components aren't flashy like turbochargers or high-performance exhausts, but without them, your car simply wouldn't run. Today, let's break down what each one does, how they work together, why they matter, and even some common issues you might face if they start to fail. By the end of this, you'll have a much deeper understanding of the mechanics behind every drive you take. The crankshaft is often described as the backbone of the engine. Imagine all the up and down movement of the pistons as explosions happen in each cylinder. That motion alone wouldn't take you anywhere unless it was converted into something usable, and that's where the crankshaft steps in. Its desussion allows it to transform the vertical movement of pistons into rotational energy, the kind that turns your wheels and ultimately moves your car. Every time fuel ignites inside a cylinder, a piston pushes downward, and the crankshaft takes that push, converts it into spin, and sends that spinning force through the transmission to the wheels. Without it, those explosive bursts of power would remain locked inside the engine with nowhere to go. Now, while the crankshaft is busy turning piston motion into wheel motion, the camshaft is taking on a very different but equally important role. The camshaft is responsible for opening and closing the intake and exhaust valves with perfect precision. Why is this timing so important? Because an engine runs on a delicate balance of air, fuel, and exhaust gases. Too early and combustion becomes inefficient. Too late and you risk damaging parts or losing power. The camshaft's lobes, those little egg-shaped bumps along its body, press on lifters or rocker arms, which in turn push the valves open at exactly the right time, then close them again. This happens thousands of times per minute, perfectly synchronized with the crankshaft. The real magic is in the synchronization. If the crankshaft is like the drummer in a band keeping the rhythm, then the camshaft is the guitarist making sure the melody lines up. If they ever fall out of sync, you don't just lose efficiency, you could destroy your engine. That's why timing belts, timing chains, and gears are used to connect them together, ensuring every piston stroke matches the exact moment valves open and close. Let's paint a simple picture. During the intake stroke, the crankshaft pulls a piston down. At that exact moment, the camshaft opens the intake valve to let in air and fuel. Next, the crankshaft pushes the piston up to compress the mixture, while the camshaft keeps both valves closed. Then comes the power stroke, where combustion forces the piston back down, and finally, the exhaust stroke, where the crankshaft pushes the piston up again, while the camshaft opens the exhaust valve to let burnt gases escape. This four-step dance repeats endlessly as long as your engine is running, and it all hinges on these two shafts working in harmony. Now, let's pause briefly. If you're finding this explanation helpful, Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more deep dives into how cars work. You'll definitely find more videos you'll enjoy. All right, back to it. One interesting thing about camshafts and crankshafts is how they've evolved over the years. In older engines, camshafts were often located inside the block, a design called cam and block or OHV, overhead valve. These engines used pushrods to transfer the motion from the camshaft up to the valves. While rugged and simple, this design had limitations at higher RPMs. Modern engines usually place the camshaft directly above the valves in what's called OHC, overhead cam, or DOHC, double overhead cam, setups. This allows for more precise control, better efficiency, and higher performance, which is why you'll see it in most cars today. The crankshaft has also seen improvements. Built from incredibly strong steel or iron alloys, it must withstand enormous forces as pistons hammer down repeatedly. Engineers have found ways to make them lighter yet stronger, improving performance and fuel economy. And with computer-aided design, balancing them has become much more precise, reducing vibrations and increasing engine life. But here's where things get really interesting. When something goes wrong with either part, the whole engine suffers. If a camshaft wears out, valves might not open properly, leading to poor combustion, rough idling, or even misfires. If timing between the crankshaft and camshaft slips, say because a timing belt breaks, you could end up with pistons slamming into open valves, bending or breaking them in an instant. That's why manufacturers stress replacing timing belts at recommended intervals or relying on durable timing chains when possible. Performance enthusiasts also love modifying camshafts. You might have heard of a cammed car, 
That simply means the owner swapped in a performance camshaft with different lobe profiles to change how the valves behave. This can increase horsepower and torque, though it often comes at the expense of smooth idling or fuel economy. Similarly, crankshafts can be upgraded for racing applications, designed to handle extreme stress while spinning at higher RPMs. To wrap this up, remember this. While the camshaft and crankshaft might not get as much attention as flashy performance parts, they are the unsung heroes of your engine. The crankshaft makes sure the energy from combustion gets turned into usable power, while the camshaft ensures that the valves open and close at the exact right time. Together, they keep your engine breathing, burning fuel, and moving your car reliably every day. And there you have it. The essential breakdown of camshafts and crankshafts, simplified yet detailed enough for anyone curious about how engines work. If this gave you a clearer picture of what's going on under your hood, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more car explanations delivered in plain, easy-to-understand language.